Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. The goal of this series is to get to 2000 ELO. We are not far off of that and we'll basically, let me just move quickly so I don't abort the game. The point of this series is for me to play rapid games, to explain to you guys my thought process so that you guys can, um, you know, get educated as a result of it. Hopefully it helps you to improve your own chess. And maybe you can even find some entertainment in this. The support on this series has been crazy, so I really appreciate it. And yeah, let's just get into the game. My opponent plays d4, c4, and I went c6 on move 2 rather than d5, c4, c6, because my plan is to go d5, because I wanted to give my opponent the option of playing e4, which is typically considered like the not refutation, but like punishment of going c6 against d4. But then we just get a Karo Khan defense, which, I mean, I absolutely love anyway. If you've been around the channel, you know that I love the Karo Khan. And so the Slav defense against d4 and c4, to me, basically means that I don't have to learn quite as much theory, because a lot of the same principles apply in the Slav and the Karo. Knight c3, we're going to go knight f6, which is fighting for the central light squares. My opponent goes e3, so he decides not to develop the bishop to g5 and f4 before closing off the pawn chain, which is interesting. We can play bishop to f5 and then go e6, and I will I would expect my opponent plans to put the queen on b3 to target the b7 pawn if we develop the bishop. I think as long as we have the c7 where that's probably fine to defend b7. Of course, we don't have to develop the bishop. We could just go e6 and block our bishop off and play it in more of a semi-slav structure. I think I'm going to do that. Let's change up the pace a bit. So previously, we have developed the bishop first. So today, we'll leave the bishop inside of the pawn chain. We're going to play bishop d6. If my opponent goes c5 to attack my bishop, we'll just drop it back. Or maybe even to e7. Okay. Theory here, I believe you're supposed to take once they develop the bishop. So you're basically saying, yeah, you wasted a move. Because, you know, bishop d3, and then we take, and then you have to take gives us an extra tempo instead of us taking while the bishop is on f1 and then the bishop can just take in one move if you get what I'm saying. And then I believe the idea is after takes you're supposed to play moves like b5, a6 and c5 because b5 will come with tempo on the bishop. I had a teammate um, in the chess league that I play in explaining this to me in a car journey once. Uh, on the way to a match. The only problem I have is if we take, then e4 becomes very playable, and I don't want to allow that. So we may take in the future, but for now I want to castle. a6 looks like a nice move, because again, that prepares this whole idea, because I want to play c5 at the end of that line, but I need the b5 pawn to be protected by my a pawn, because my C pawn will no longer be protecting it because it'll be moving to C5. And then once you uh, create this expansion, you can play Bishop B7 to develop. I think I'm going to start with Knight B to D7. And it looks like we're entering some kind of theoretical line. Because you know on chess.com where um, above the annotations, it like will transpose, like it will say it's like an actual opening even though you might not be doing that from the very start, if you get what I mean. It says it's uh, the main line of the semi-slav, which makes sense because this is the main setup of the semi-slav. Okay, a3, so he wants to go to for b4. Interesting. If we take and take and here and here and here, Maybe his plan is to go b4 to clamp down on the c5 square. And if we go a6 immediately, it's a good chance he plays b4. Hmm. Is that a cause for concern? I don't know. 
we can also take and go e5 because we have enough control of that square. That could lead to a queen trade, but I don't think I mind that. Especially because this bishop's blocked in. And e5 will open up our bishop. So let's just... Should we take here first? Because if we go here, then we're going to get... We're going to get an isolated pawn? Here, 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 here. Yeah, I don't like that. So if we take first, and then we go e5, then... We have to watch out for the bishop being undefended. But if he takes, then we take with the knight, and then the bishop's defended by the queen, even though his queen sees our bishop, so that's fine. And if he takes and takes, and takes and takes, I think this is good for us, because our bishop can now get out to a square like f5. Okay. I think we want to punish the fact that he's locked his bishop in, and he's played the move a3. I feel like we might be able to claim that they're a waste of time. I feel like this is the principled approach. He could push, but that doesn't look that good to me. So let's go for it. Let's indulge e5. And now we're starting to break out of the position. I was considering playing rook e8 in preparation. But firstly, I wanted to strike while the iron is hot. Secondly, I didn't like the fact that rook e8 kind of gave up some defense of f7. Which could lead into ideas like knight 2 g5 targeting the f7 pawn. And we have no pawn on d5 to block the bishop's scope. And our e6 pawn has obviously moved, so we're not blocking the scope. Uh, by having a pawn on e6, right? And he does push. Okay, well that's kind of surprising. Now if we take... If we take, then like, knight takes. I feel like that benefits him. Now I want to start with the move knight to b6 to attack the bishop and attack the pawn. Right, I feel like that's a no-brainer move. Also opens up our bishop to play like bishop g4, threaten moves like e4 with the pin on the knight. Also means that our queen defends our bishop, so this doesn't come with a discovered attack on the bishop. Again, I don't want to take him, because I feel like that just helps his position, if nothing else. By the way, I'm sure that flags Montenegro. Yeah. It's, um, if you don't know that country... But I, I know I've got a lot of American viewers. I don't know whether my American chess viewers have as bad a geography as people typically suggest Americans do. But Montenegro is like uh, next to Serbia, which is like northish of Greece, a lot near the coastline of the Adriatic, which is east of Italy. You should know where Italy is. Come on. Okay, so. This doesn't quite feel right. Because this pawn is under a lot of pressure. And a move I want to play is e4. e4 attacks this knight. It also opens up my bishop's scope on h2. And that could be useful because if we end up trading a ton of stuff on um, d5 and the queen ends up there, then bishop takes h2 could lead to a discovered attack on the queen. Because it will come with check, right? So e4 looks like a very, very logical move. And if he plays a move like knight to d2, we can just take on d5 and win a pawn. Also potential attacks setting up with uh, the weak h2 square. And the fact that he won't have a knight on f3 to defend it, because we'll be controlling that square. Typical attacking idea. Now after e4, he could go knight g5 to try and put pressure on e4, but again, Again, I think we just take, and he can't trade everything, because if the queen takes, then bishop h2, and we'll win the queen. So this looks like it's a mistake from him, playing the move d5. Again, I'll show you what happens if we took here, but I feel like all it does is benefit white. Maybe we could have played e4 immediately. 
Although then maybe um, he could have taken on c6 with an attack on the knight and an attack on the bishop. Whereas playing knight to b6 first means that this never comes with an attack on the knight and the bishop's defended by the queen. And we're also attacking his bishop, obviously. So I get the impression that this is just going to be a pawn up position for us. And one of the issues he has as well is that his, not only is h2 incredibly weak, which is a problem, but his bishop also can't really get out. He's struggling to move this b-pawn to Fianchetto it because his bishop's in the way. And he's struggling to move his e3-pawn to get the bishop out because our pawn's in the way. Okay, yeah, knight g5. I think we just take. He has no threats. I don't think. We can also play this move bishop h2, king h2, knight g4 check, opening up an attack on the knight. Because remember, this bishop doesn't defend it because the pawn's in the way. But if we take here, he can... If we play here, he can just play king h1. And then we still have the problem of the d-pawn to deal with. So I'm going to take it. And maybe I'll play this next move. Or maybe I'll play knight here, now that this pawn is defended by the pawn. Right? Because previously my knight was doing the job of defending that. Maybe, maybe here we could have considered this move a bit more seriously. Or considered this move a bit more seriously. But the problem is, with the pressure on h2... Um, like, let me think. Worst case scenario for White, he just moves his king to h1, and our bishop looks a bit offside, and he has some pressure in the center if this pawn is still alive, right? Whereas if we just take the pawn off the board, this might not be the perfect continuation, but we're up a pawn, we have a solid center, his pieces are really locked out of the game, there's a comfortable position. Okay, goes f4. This blocks our bishop off, also defends the knight. I'm very tempted to take en passant after knight takes. We have an isolated pawn, he also defends h2 now. He can also try and play e4. So while my gut tells me I should take it, what if I don't? Well, if I don't take it, then our pawn wedge remains in the center, blocking off the bishop, and blocking off this bishop, because now he can never move the e-pawn. His knight also has no real way back, because if he goes back to h3, we're going to take it, and f3 is still under control. e3 is also incredibly weak. What if we just go h6, force the knight back to h3, and then take it and ruin the structure? Is that winning? No, because he can use the g-file for himself. Are we better? Probably. He is also maybe actually threatening to take this now, though, because we don't have bishop to h2 at the end of the line with a discovery. So maybe we can consider bishop c5. Again, this knight has no way back into the game anyway. Bishop c5 looks like a professional move, just opening up the defense on the pawn. And also pressuring the free pawn, which is very weak, as we already stated. Maybe we can try and play d4 and get a passed pawn going. Because like h6 knight back takes takes, it looks nice, but this knight's not doing anything anyway. I feel like we can cash in with that whenever we want. So this looks like a nicer move to me as well. Also, note, the queen cannot get to the king side right now because uh, we cover all the light squares. If my opponent plays a move like queen e1 to try and get in on the dark squares, then maybe we cash in. Okay, I saw this move attacking the bishop, but we can just take like this. And the bishop's just on a bad diagonal. Maybe his idea is to play b4. And then Fianchetto. Because he now gets the bishop out of the way. 
But what about queen b6? Lining this up, putting pressure on this. It's not easy to defend this pawn. Queen b6, queen e2, or maybe queen e1. Then maybe we can go for this. And if he plays b4, it's not that deep anyway. We could play the move a5 to prevent b4. But I'm going to go queen b6 first. I'm going to do this first because b4 isn't playable here because we just take with check. And then we're up two clean pawns and we have connected past pawns in the center, which are going to completely destroy his position. So, and again, like... I keep saying, this knight you may think is a bit scary looking on g5, but it has no future. No future at all. Okay, b4 is the next move from my opponent, so I'm tempted to play a5 to stop that. And if he goes b3 to try and develop like this, then he's locking his bishop out of the game, which can't be a good thing. Also, even if he does that, then e3 will be hanging. So let's go a5. Remember, our knight is keeping an eye on the d5 square because we can't let this d5 pawn fall. Um, it's uh, obviously very important because it supports e4 and e4 takes up a lot of space and stops this pawn from ever moving because it's a massive weakness. Uh, I could have considered the move knight to g4 to put extra pressure on e3, but firstly, we hang the d4 pawn. And secondly... He could just defend this pawn. Like, he could just play a move like queen e2. Okay, so he just puts pressure on the pawn. Do we kick it out now? I feel like this is the right moment. interesting move is bishop to g4 attacking the queen because the queen has to maintain defense of b3 so the only square would be c2 and then maybe we can go rook c8 to set up bishop e3 i don't think that works actually because if we put bishop e3, then bishop e3, and then our queen's going to be hanging at the end of that line. So, is it worth playing bishop g4? I don't know. This pawn is under attack. We could just defend it like this. I was a little worried over f2, because, like, he's lining stuff up, but... I guess not really. Let's just go rook d8. Let's just play simple. Let's defend. I was considering bishop g4, queen c2, and then bringing this rook to d8, so that this rook maintains defense of f7. But I don't think we need to worry about that. I feel like I'd rather develop this bishop and then get this rook onto c8. Because these are probably the important files. Okay, puts the queen on c2. Right. Now we can consider the move knight g4 attacking here because d5 is well defended. Ooh. Do you want to see a cool move though? a4? If you take, then queen a5 attacks the bishop and the rook. I don't Oh, you do have this. There is that. But even if we go a4, we could just retreat. I don't feel like we've gained anything, because having pressure here is nice. So... Okay, let's consider this. Knight g5, attacking the pawn. How is he going to defend it? 
he goes queens queen c3 d4 can't take it because then you lose your queen so the queen has to move but oh no actually um f7 would hang so let's play h6 let's start with h6 let's kick the knight out just so nothing happens to h7 sorry f7 we can take the knight but the knight can only go to f2 anyway and it's not really doing anything from f2 now let's consider knight g4 queen c3 d4 queen c4 attacking f7 but then bishop to e6 and then we win the bishop don't think i've missed anything we have an awful lot of pressure here and if we win e3 then we're going to have connected pass pawns in the center like i said previously which should be pretty winning unless we royally mess it up somehow this is um quite a nice game currently it doesn't really look like a slav to be honest like you would not have thought this came from a slav but i think one of the important things is the fact that this knight has no role in the game again if the knight goes to f2 we're not going to trade we're just going to take on e3 and um even if the knight gets to f2 then where's it going like we control e4 we control d3 we control g4 if it goes back to h3 then again it has no future anyway he might try something like f5 to give the knight the f4 square okay he goes for queen c3 but now d4 now d4 if you take then we win the queen so d4 looks like a no-brainer remember the difference is that this knight isn't helping out with the attack on f7 if he only goes queen c4 threatening this then we should just have bishop to e6 skewer this is make or break make or break now this is the big move because now we're committing a pawn this pawn was doing a great job holding down e4 and blocking off this bishop's scope but now it's time to try and break through and the tactics look to be working in our favor which tends to be the case when you've placed your pieces well which i believe i have my pieces look absolutely beautiful queen goes back to c2 that's what we want to see uh the queen's threatening e4 but the queen can never take it because the bishop's gonna hang so I want to play this. Hmm. Although then he can just take with the bishop. And then when we take back we have doubled pawns. So what about if we go d3? That looks better. So I'll explain why. I like d3 more because I don't want to take on e3 with a pawn because then we block off our own attack and we double our pawns so they're far less scary the queen also has to maintain an eye on the bishop so the queen can now no longer defend e3 because we have a pawn in the way so we should just be able to take is it game over no but it's getting close let's take he has no threats which is important and if the queen ever goes to c4 threatening f7 then again bishop e6 and we win the bishop currently our knight obviously controls that square though if you take here then we take the bishop king h1 we could consider taking on h3 and then taking f4 all viable moves Queen's running out of squares to defend the bishop though. If something like bishop takes, bishop takes, king h1, we might be able to just go bishop to d4 attacking the queen. The 
queen can no longer use c2 to defend the bishop, and if the queen goes to c4, then we already know bishop e6 wins the bishop. So what about this? Where is your queen going to go? Even if this didn't work out tactically, we're also not really committing to anything with bishop to d4 because we're attacking the queen. Even if the queen had a square to maintain defense of the bishop, you know, we just get the move back anyway. Okay. Okay, takes there. I'm not worried because my queen defends everything and my queen is defended. So that's just a free piece. I would be a bit more scared if knight g5 was a move, but it's not. There's also no open files towards my king. His queen's still under attack. We're up a piece now. If he goes queen c4, bishop e6, just as if he played it previously. Bishop's plenty well protected. Queen will be forced back. And then we can worry about defending the e4 pawn. Okay, so he goes back. Again, we can take this knight, but this knight isn't doing anything anyway. I mean, what? You're going to put it there? So I instead propose, uh, we could take here, we could take there, actually, threatening a queen trade, and where is the queen actually going to go? The only square to decline the queen trade is queen d1, but then we take here. And uh, we go up even more material. So queen b2 might be more clinical. Because white can't decline the queen trade. I will say actually. Um, move 27. Queen b1. Queen takes. Sorry queen d1. Queen takes a1. Queen h5 check. My opponent offered me a rematch, but we're going to decline. I was just wondering whether he had queen d1 here. And if we to take, he could give us some kind of check. Ah, if he checks here, we have bishop e6, so that's fine. Because he's opening up the attack on our queen, right? And if he goes here, then we just have g6, and he has no more checks. And his rook has no defenders, so he can't do something like this, because then he gets mated. Wow, that was a very, very nice game. And I think there is a very high chance that that was pretty damn accurate as well. Let's get into the analysis. Okay, wow, that game was literally perfect. And just to prove it, let me just switch to a really ugly... Really ugly scene. I know you can't see my face anymore. But just to prove that this was an insane game. Look at this. No inaccuracies, no mistakes, no misses, no blunders. What the hell? What the hell? That's insane. <laughs> I mean, my opponent got 83% accuracy himself. Like, he played really well. But 97.3? Literally perfect. That's mad. Let's get into the game. That, that That is crazy, like genuinely. So my opponent starts with d4. And like I said, I play c6 to give my opponent the option of going e4. And then we just go into a Cairo Khan, right? And if you've seen the channel, you know I love playing this. Oh my god, just.com. Please don't do the error classifying move thing. I'm going to have to refresh the page. Because it's going to do that forever if I don't. Uh, so yeah, I'm giving him the option of playing the Cairo Khan. By the way, if you're still watching the video at the 30 minute mark, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And can I get a subscribe, if you haven't already, for 97.3% perfect game? Perfect game. And if you're already subscribed, then just drop a like. Show me some love. You know how it is. Anyway, the game. Let's get back to the chess. So that's why we go c6 first instead of going d5, c4, c3. Also, if you play d5, your opponent can play some, like, bishop f4, London stuff. 
or go for like a Jabava London with this kind of setup. C6 makes it a bit less obvious what you're going to do because you can play like a perk defense from this with like d6, g6, knight f6, knight bd7, bishop g7, castle. So it just keeps your opponent guessing a little bit. But we go for the Slav. My opponent goes knight c3. In, in many of these lines, the computer prefers that you take on c4 and make white take it back like in the future but i'm not a massive fan of taking unless i can see an actual continuation partially because i simply don't want to learn the theory like i don't want to learn it because i've got other things to do in life you know i've got to go to the gym i've got to do my university work etc etc you've all got things to do so why bother learning a bunch of in-depth theory when you can just play something that's kind of intuitive right and i feel like if you know the caro then the slav is very intuitive you just defend the pawn if he takes then you take and then you have an exchange slav structure and this is well known for being one of the boring most boring openings in the world but as the black pieces you shouldn't mind that because as black your goal isn't to win unless you're playing a way lower rated player but this guy's fairly well rated right so my opponent goes e3, which was kind of surprising because, I mean, bishop f4 is quite a popular move here. Computer deems it as a mistake because apparently I can take on c4 and after e3 I can go b5. But like I said, this contains a bunch of theory. I don't want to learn all that theory. Come on, who's got time for that? So we go e6. Again, I did consider bishop f5. Which is certainly a move. But then queen b3 is kind of annoying. Just attacking my pawn. Queen b6 defending. Maybe my opponent has moves like c5 at some point. To force me to take and open up the file for his rook. This can be kind of scary from the black side. Although the computer says it's fine. I think one of the reasons is because this bishop isn't on f4. Controlling b8 and c7. Which can be important squares. But this is incredibly cramped. And I don't really have... I think I've got decent results in positions like these, but it's just not that fun. And I don't think it's that intuitive to play from the black side. Again, it's also quite theoretical. So I instead go for e6, which blocks my bishop in. And you might be saying, isn't the point of the Slav to develop the bishop and then go e6? Well, yeah. Yeah, it kind of is. But the bishop... Firstly, it does get alive later in the game. And secondly, like I was saying, there are often plans to let me just go ahead a little bit, to do something like this. And then go for moves like a6 and go for c5 and go for bishop to b7. Not in this particular case, because like I said, e4, the computer loves that move. And I was worried about my opponent playing this sort of line, which is why I didn't go for it. But these ideas exist, right? Uh, also, if you haven't seen the previous episodes of the Rating Climb, play this as a link below. Just saying. Uh, so, bishop d6. The bishop can go to e7, but because his bishop isn't out putting any pressure on any of the diagonals, I thought it made more sense to bring my bishop to d6. Again, if he takes and I would take with the c-pawn, then maybe there's problems with knight b5 targeting my bishop. But I wouldn't take with the C pawn, I would take with the E pawn to give to make sure that B5 is covered and to give me really nice control over E4, especially when I castle and put a rook on the E file. This is quite a common pawn structure that can occur from both the black and the white side, but I always typically prefer this for the side with the open E file rather than the open C file. That's just personal preference. I think it's called the Carlsbad structure. Because it just occurs so often. And if you play like the Slav, the Karo Khan, I def to be, to be fair, it happens in a lot of openings that aren't 1e4. Or even openings that are 1e4, but it'll be like reversed. So black will have the pawns on e6 and d5, and white will have the pawns on d4 and c3. Anyway, common structure, so it's worth looking up. Pretty sure it's called the Carlsbad structure. 
But my opponent goes bishop d3. Again, like I said, common idea is to take and then take and force your opponent to waste a move. But I thought castling was just as good. e4 here is a move for white, but I was just going to take it and just trade. And I don't really see white having any advantage in this position. Moves like c5 exist. I can just play moves like h6. I can even just develop the knight to be ultra solid. Yeah, white's got a bit more space. But you're never going to break through on the d5 square. And you're also not going to generate a massive attack. Uh, most likely. It's going to be kind of difficult. Especially if I play h6 stopping anything from coming to the g5 square. So my opponent castles. I go knight bd7. And this position is basically just equal. Opponent goes a3. And here I thought that a3 was a little bit inaccurate. Again, rook e8 here is a move, like I said, but d takes c4 is better. After the bishop takes, e5 is the move. And like I said, I did consider playing e5 immediately, but I didn't like this line. Um, so I didn't want to get an isolated pawn like this. Maybe it's fine after moves like bishop to e6 and you've got plenty of defense. His bishop's still bad. Your bishop's pretty active. But I didn't see a point in giving myself an isolated pawn. So I took on c4 first. Again, white has to waste a move essentially taking. And we go e5. Here I was expecting him to take. And I thought this position, like this end game, would be a bit better for me if everything got traded. Because like I said, I've got a great bishop. He's got a terrible bishop. It, my light square bishop's going to come out. My C pawn also controls the movement of his minor pieces really nicely. Common idea in, in a bunch of openings. And it often occurred when I used to play the King's Indian defense a lot. When you go for like C6, D6, E5. And you control the movement of your enemy's knight from C3. Again, this is fairly drawish. But I think if anyone has winning chances, it's probably black. There's also Queen C2. Just not really reacting and controlling the e4 square to disallow e4. And the game goes on. Normal moves get played. Um, also bishop to a2 is a move. h3 is a move. Basically anything except for what he played. And yeah, knight b6 is a bit more accurate than going e4 straight away. Because like I said, if your opponent moves the knight, then you can go back into the same line. Well, your opponent can take on c6 and if you take on f3 then d6 hangs also d7 hangs but apparently this is better if you take on g2 i assume you just move the rook you don't really want to take this back because then you open your king up a fair bit but this position is pretty equal knight b6 however doesn't allow this to come with a tempo on the knight or the queen to open up with an attack on the bishop which is what i explained during the game and so the bishop moves to b3. And again, the crucial move is e4, attacking the knight. Knight goes to g5. And we can take on d5 now. Again, you might be saying, okay, black has two defenders and white has three attackers. White can't take though, because after everything gets traded, the knight isn't hanging because um, the queen defends the knight. If the queen doesn't take, the knight is hanging. Just to be aware, because remember, this bishop is blocked off from the defense of the knight. But you just have bishop h2, king h2, queen takes queen. So while it seems like black only has two defenders, black actually has three. Uh, because the queen defends the d5 square through tactical reasons. So f4 is played, and to be fair to my opponent, f4 is a very nice move. Because h2 is under a lot of threat. Knight coming to g4 could be a problem, because this knight is lacking defense. And here, taking is bad. Taking is bad, because then this knight takes back. e4 is on the cards now to try and break out. d5 is also a lot weaker. And the knight is back in the game. You know, once e4 is played, the bishop can get out. The rook's on the open file, could meet up with the bishop in the future. 
there's no need to allow this. So, you know, we go, okay, this diagonal is blocked off. But what did f4 do? Oh, it left the defense of e3. So let's target e3. And bishop c5 is the best move. And it also just ensures that um, d5 is nice and defended now. My opponent goes knight to a4, which I thought was a weird move. Um, king to h1 is a move. f5 is apparently a move. Uh, a4. Trying to go a5 to kick my knight out. I think a4 was a move I was definitely expecting, but it's a tough position for black. Sorry, for white. He goes knight a4. We trade knights. And clearly, the idea was to go b5. h6, the computer quite likes here. But the computer doesn't want to take. And I explained this. Like, this is good for black. But it's not that good. d4 is apparently the move. Had I seen d4, maybe I would have gone for it. Because black is up a pawn and white structure is horrible in this position. But I thought that I could use h6, knight h3, kind of at any point. Because the knight isn't really doing anything. So I have bishop, sorry, queen b6, which isn't the best move, but it is a good move. Rook e1. Bishop g4 is an idea here to attack the queen. But queen d2 just keeps an eye on e3. And then the computer likes a5 or d4. So okay, I'm, I'm quite happy with queen b6 followed by a5. Different move order, but again, bishop g4 can come at any time if we want. There's no rush. Bishop b3 is played. We went rook d8. Okay, yeah, bishop to g4 again is a good move because you're trying to deflect the queen. Queen c2 h6, knight h3. Yeah, it really likes this idea of d4. Maybe I should have seen that. I was considering playing a move like rook a c8, lining up the uh, attack on the queen. But again, the bishop can just retreat. Or you can even go bishop d2. And this tactic doesn't really work because after takes takes, your queen is under attack. So if you take on c2 and bishop takes, and like rook takes b2, White is just up a piece. Like, you have a few extra pawns, but white's up a piece at the end of the day. There's no need to allow this when you're completely winning. So, instead I just went rook d8, I'm like, look, my position is perfect. Why would I give you anything? Queen c2 all the same, and then h6. We timed that very nicely. This is now by far the best move in the position. h6, kick the knight out, and again, you could take it, but there's no need. Your bishop can do more damage by still being on the board. And again, even if the knight retreats, it's not doing anything. So we went knight g4. Again, d4 is the move, but knight g4 is just as good. Like, d4 can be played at any time. That's kind of my argument. Like, the computer at many on these moves is, play, is saying, like, play d4, play d4, play d4. Yeah, but I can play d4 at any time. And the fact that it's the top computer choice in a lot of positions kind of just shows that. Like, there's, there's no real rush. Queen moves to c3 to defend the pawn. Yeah, there's, there's really no... There's nothing for white here. He's so positionally dominated. Like, these pieces are completely out of the game. And our pieces are amazing. Like, they're just doing so much work. And these pawns are just completely constricting his position. So queen c3, d4. I, I believe we timed it absolutely perfectly. Queen c2, again, you can't take because we take and then queen's under attack. Bishop b3 doesn't help. If you take the queen, then you can take on b6 with an attack on the rook and you're okay. But we don't have to do that. We can just take with the knight. And no matter what you take back with, we're going to win the queen one of two ways. Unless you move the uh, king and then we just win the queen anyway. Basically, you're screwed. So, queen c2. And yeah, d3 is the move. You could have taken on e3 like this, which I considered. Or going knight takes first and then trading like this. But these pawns are a lot less scary in this position. Because they're doubled like that. 
yeah, it's winning. It's also funny. It takes away the F2 square from the knight. So the knight literally has no moves now. <laughs> um, so don't get me wrong. It's completely winning. But I feel like... Well, d3 is the best move. Because again, the queen has to maintain defense of the bishop. Queen c3. Funnily enough, bishop takes f2 is the best move here. Because the computer is basically saying the bishop's going to die anyway. The queen can't stick around. We take on e3. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. King h1. And yeah, bishop d4 is the clinical move here. There's plenty of other moves. You could have played like bishop to f5. Just defending the pawn chain. Getting ready to move the bishop and push. Or push like the e-pawn. But bishop d4 is far more clinical. Because again, you're playing on the fact that the queen is going to just, just can't defend the bishop. Queen c4, bishop e6. You skewer the queen to the bishop. So, bishop takes f7 is the move. I take back. And the queen has no checks. So she has to retreat. Again, there's a load of moves here. Bishop f5 was one I was considering. You can also take on h3. And I guess play a move like queen to c6 to play on the long diagonal. No, just e3. Oh, and then, yeah. If you take here, then queen c6. And that is not good. Yeah, you have to give up a queen there. But, 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 I thought I'd keep it nice and simple and take on b2. And the problem is the queen just runs out of moves. The queen has no square to avoid a trade of queens apart from d1. But then, like I explained, we can just take on a1. And we already saw what happened just after the game ended. If the queen tries to give a check on b3, it gets attacked with bishop b6. On h5, it gets attacked with g6. And the rook is hanging. So something like queen h5, uh, g6. Queen to h4 defending the rook. I mean, we have no worries. We can just play like queen c3. Put, again, we're still putting pressure on the rook so the queen can't go anywhere. Knight g1 is the best move, like d2. Rook moves. We can just keep pushing. Like, oh, that actually sacks a rook, but okay, let's just say bishop f5 defending. There's nothing. White can't move. This doesn't even do anything, so you can't even take because that's mate. So he took, bishop takes b2, rook takes e4, and my opponent resigns because his rook is under attack, obviously. Even if he saves this rook, you know, there's nothing to it. You're getting mated. Um, if you try and move, like, you know, you just go e3, push. It's game over. But that was a really interesting game. Like, I'm very happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed. It gave you some ideas to play in the Slav defense. Because the problem is, if you do sit back and just maintain this structure forever and ever, eventually White's going to start playing moves like C5 and B4 and B5. And A3 got me a little bit worried of that, because I didn't want him to just expand queenside forever. So he struck in the center at the right time. Opponent made a mistake. Converted beautifully. Like I said, 97.3% accuracy. Zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero misses, zero blunders. Insane. And this isn't me tooting my own horn. It's kind of me just showing, like, look, it's actually not that difficult if you're logical. Because everything I've explained in this video, I hope, should make sense to you. Yeah, some of it you might not see when you play, necessarily. Like, just with your own head, you might just not spot certain ideas. But everything should make sense. And again, I wasn't using a computer to find these moves for obvious reasons, because that would be cheating. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.